he actually had to go AWOL <laughs> on Labor Day weekend. He went AWOL and came home, and we married. We eloped and got married, and then came back and told my dad. So that was why my dad was upset with me. And my dad just insisted that I stay with them. Well, we actually went to school together, um, and I graduated in May, and uh, he got drafted and was in um, Williamsburg, Virginia, at um, Fort Eustis, Virginia, when, we, uh, when I graduated. Uh, he came home, we got married, and then we moved back to Fort Eustis, stayed up there a couple of months, I guess until uh, around the 1st of December, and he got orders for Vietnam. So uh, I called my parents, and of course they said, you come home. When I was in the hospital and I had him, there was a nurse, I, my dad went and notified the Red Cross, and the Red Cross was supposed to go and notify him. But a nurse came into the room and she said, take my advice and write him a letter right now. Well, sure enough, that's how he found out. The Red Cross never let him know. His son was two weeks old before he even knew he had a son. Oh, it was awful. It was awful. Um, of course, we were, like I said, I keep repeating myself, but we were just two young kids and lived in a trailer park, and, and we didn't have a phone. So to call my parents, we had to go down to this phone booth Pe kids today don't know what a phone booth is. <laughs> but anyway, he came home that night, that evening, because he kept thinking he was not going to go because he came home one day and he said, everybody in my platoon's got orders but me and one other guy. So he said, I don't think I'm going. I said, great. A couple of days later he came home and he said, well, guess what? I got orders. Well, of course, I just fell apart. Here I was pregnant. and. Because of the way we left home, my dad was pretty upset with me. And so I didn't know if I could even go back home. So I went down and I called my parents and I called my mom and I told her and my dad was at home because before that, I would always call when my dad wasn't at home because I knew he was upset with me. And so, of course, when I told my mom that Doyle had gotten orders for Vietnam, of course, she got upset. and. Uh, I could hear my dad in the background, you tell her to come home. So that, that was a relief on top of all the everything else. So yes, yes. So I came home and spent the time with my parents and they loved it because it was their first grandbaby. There was no t cell phones, no email or anything like that. And so if I went a week or so and didn't get a letter, I would just be so upset. But like I said, I couldn't dwell on it. Mm -hmm because just about the time I was going to the pits, I had to take care of a baby. So he was definitely a blessing. Our son was uh, 10 months old before he ever met his father. And uh, of course he was very, um, he didn't want to have anything to do with him. Yeah. You know, I remember coming from the airport, my parents went with me to pick him up and I had our son. And of course my mom had Ken and I ran to meet Doyle, you know. But when we got in the car coming home, Doyle and I got in the back, and my mom and my dad, of course, were in the front, and my son was with my mom. And he kept looking over the back seat as, as if to say, That's my mama, but who is that man? He had no idea. We had not had that much time, just the two of us, before he left. And then he comes back, and there's three now. He was wanting to go here and here and here and here and do this, this and this and this and it just wasn't as easy with a baby as it was without. I was definitely different because I'd been home taking care of a baby. I have a 19 year old granddaughter and I can't imagine. I'm thinking I was married and had a baby when I was her age. I can't imagine her being married and having a baby. But um, just all that that time you have to grow up that's that's just that's just all it is uh because like we moved to Fayetteville and I, I didn't take my parents with me you know it was just me and him and it was just um learn as you go
For my first husband, I think being in the military and being in Vietnam, um, it kind of made him hard. Mm -hmm. But I guess they have to do that to survive, but he just didn't have the, the emotions that a lot of mm -hmm. people have. And I think, I don't think he was like that before. Looking back now, like what, what would you say to that 18 or 19 year old you? For someone that young, if they have the option to go home and be with family while their husband's gone, I say go home mm -hmm. because you've got that support. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that they don't have support on their back. Now, I didn't. There was no such thing as military wives affairs. I didn't have any friends up there. No, I, it, no one. Any. No one except my husband and his friends. He had some friends yeah. up there. but. If that's an option, I think that's for the for a younger person, and especially if they have small children, if you can go home and stay home with, around your family, mm -hmm. I, I say do it because they can help you. I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't went home.